really sure I will die in few years because of this. I don't know what this is, but that's a lot of men right there. There's a lot of weak-minded guys out here, man. A lot of guys who can't handle losing weight. Well, size doesn't matter. Health matters. Ilya Golem, one of the most massive bodybuilders ever, tragically passed away yesterday at just 36 years old. His friend said, with an unbearable pain in my heart, I must inform you that Ilya Golem has left this world. On the morning of September 6, his heart stopped at home. I was there. Called the ambulance, performed chest compression while they were on their way. The ambulance arrived very quickly, and he was urgently airlifted to the clinic. At this time, I was praying, and I had hoped that Ilya would come back. Every day, I stayed by his side, I had help. His heart restarted for two days, but today, the doctor gave me the terrible news. His brain has died. But, was that the whole story? Maybe the cause of death isn't that simple. Born in 1988 in Belarus, Elia grew up as a skinny kid who struggled with gynecomastia, which led to people teasing him and calling him a girl. When I was 12 years old, my chest started swelling. The most dumb thing, I diagnosed breast cancer for myself. In my class, I was the smallest guy maybe. I was looked like a girl with no genetics at all. And when I was 16, I couldn't do any push-ups. Inspired by legends like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone, Alone. He started bodybuilding as a teenager. Arnold Schwarzenegger or Rambo. I told myself that I want to be like them. I want to be outside. What people saw me. I need to achieve their size. But how? I really don't care about it. How I achieve this? We didn't have an internet in our country. Despite training for two years, he didn't get any result. At 18, after moving to the Czech Republic, he met someone who introduced him to the steroids, which changed the course of his life. For from a normal student in university to the dark side of bodybuilding. One day I met this, you know, gym boss who doesn't sell nothing, but he has a friend who knows who can sell you something. Started with this D-ball, nothing else. But this feeling, this difference, what D-ball brought to me was like not even comparable. In Czech Republic, my bodybuilding way was started in university, was a big gym uh, with a lot of equipment. My problem was was that I decided to use the gear. I decided to try different things, but I had no good source. Spent a lot of money, totally fake thing. By the time he was 26, he was already massive, weighing 220 pounds. In just one year, he packed on another 33 pounds, pushing his body to the limit year after year, until he reached the 340 pounds. He was massive. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's a lot of men right there. He entered the bodybuilding scene and arrived in America just days after Rich Piana's death, quickly becoming sponsored by Piana's company, 5% Nutrition. In a one day, make a decision that I need to move for a new life, for a new thing, for a new environment. Uh, I don't have a children, but why you move? In Czech Republic, you had a, had a good condition, you had a business, yeah. you, you make a money. Standing at six feet tall with a massive 25 inch biceps, Ilya was absurdly strong. Lifting huge weights, a 600 pound bench press, 700 pounds deadlifts, and 700 pound squats. And to fuel all that muscle, he followed the huge diet of 17,000 calories a day. He would eat 100 pieces of sushi and large portions of steaks just to meet his daily calorie needs. 17,000 calories today, guys. If I do 10,000, I'm not growing. To gain the weight like this, it's uh, life changing because in a real life, you can do anything. You are happy that you can move. Yeah. You break things when you sit down on them? Yeah. You realize that you have a real trouble with basic movements, like foot and oh, other. Yeah. If you have a knee, you are not cute anymore. No one wants to have sex with you. He was an absolute monster. I met him once in Dubai and I can tell you. Seeing him in person was like seeing a real life superhero. But why didn't Ilya stop using steroids, even knowing the danger? The answer lies 
embody this morphia. Anyone that gets even halfway big understand how powerful and out of control body dysmorphia can get, especially once you are at the higher level of bodybuilding. What's your reason for being this big? It's very easy. All my life, I was the kind of man, I need to show people all this way I gained now. It's a very big amount of work. For me, I need some good motivation to change it. Not only like, uh, okay, just lose uh, 50 pounds right. or... Uh, there's a lot of weak-minded guys out here, man. A, a lot of guys who, who can't handle losing weight, can't handle walking around 225 or 215 or even 190. So it's it's a mental sickness that a lot of people accumulate from our sport. Men and women walking around with this alter ego that size matters. Well, size doesn't matter. Health matters. Elias death has sparked the debate. Some are pointing fingers at his heavy steroid use, while others argue it might have been something more than that. I've been following Ilya for a few years. He hadn't posted much over the last few months, and I had a feeling something was wrong. Maybe a health scar, or that he had to downsize. Turns out, it was a far worse scenario than any of us could have guessed. For a while, Ilya was active. He was constantly posting, sharing his workouts, his meals, his life, but then suddenly it went silent, and I hadn't seen anything from him in over a year and a half. There were no updates. It was like he vanished from everywhere. At one point, it seemed like someone else took over his Instagram, pushing clothing and supplement company. And now there is a lot of people on social media wondering that Ilya actually passed away earlier than we thought and just wasn't announced. One time I was really depressed about how things going and uh, I need some support. His last video showed just how sick he really was. He was battling the consequences of years of abuse from synthol, just like Rich Piana. His kidneys and liver were severely damaged from all the oils dispersing through his body. Other bodybuilders who have passed away during this year include men's open pros Christopher Berner and Doug Ferrucci, NPC bodybuilder Daniel Broadhurst, figure pro Cynthia Goldani and Kevin Godhart. This is serious and something has to change, but I don't know how you can change anything that goes against the concept of bodybuilding. It's not bodybuilding, it's the individual. Sport created great champions. It created the history of champions. I mean, you're going to take the music out of, out of Michael Jai, you're going to take music out of Jimi Hendrix. No, it's not it. It's not what killed him. It's a lifestyle. It's individual that makes that decision to do something to themselves without the proper medical guidance, point blank, period. I think a lot of good could be done if the big name in bodybuilding were able to openly discuss drug usage without sponsors dropping them or without people turning their entire social media comment section into the Roy did all the work type comments. It's sad, man. You cannot get success out of a steroid bottle. You are a product of your decision. As a man, we have to make choices. As men, we have to know the risk that we're taking. I took my own life in my own hands. And you have to be smart when you do that. You could be that next victim any moment, any time. You're taking your life in your own hands. Anyway, what do you guys think about this? What really caused Elias' death? Was it steroids or something else? I guess we'll never know. Rest in peace, brother.